Hey guys, in this episode we're gonna be talking about how to dual boot your Rails application against your production version of Rails that is stable and everything, and test the exact same code base against the latest version of Rails that's in GitHub in master. So that allows you to test, for example, right now, we're on Rails 6.0, Rails 6.1 RC1 was just released, and Rails 6.1 is around the corner, so it's great for us to be able to run our app against Rails 6.0 and 6.1 and see if we can get all the tests passing, if we can get all our dependencies up to date, and all of those things. So the way to do this is actually really simple. We're gonna use a tool called Next Rails, but there's also Boot Boot from Shopify and probably some other ways you can do this as well. These tools just help you manage the gem file. So this is going to be a little command we'll install as a gem dependency that uh, is called Next Rails, and then we run Next Bundle Install Next Rails S and it's basically a wrapper around our Rails commands that we normally run. We just say next and the regular command, and that will change the gem file to use the different version of Rails, so Rails 6.1 in our case. So it's really straightforward, and all we have to do is run bundle add next underscore Rails to add it to our gem file, and then we will run next dash dash init, which is going to create a gem file dot lock um, for next. And we can see that here, we'll see gem file dot next, and then we'll have when we run next bundle install, a gem file dot next dot lock. But before we do that, we need to open up our regular gem file. And we want to go in here and change one thing. So here at the very top, you'll see def next, and it will check to see if the file name is gemfile.next. So this is going to be what determines whether or not we should install the latest version of Rails in master and GitHub or the latest stable version of Rails. So all we have to do is say in our dependencies, if next, we install the latest version. So we'll say GitHub Rails slash Rails Otherwise, we'll use the latest stable version, which is 6.0.3 as of right now. And that's all there is to it. This little helper is going to take care of that for us. And then we can go into our terminal. We'll close the Rails server. We'll run next bundle install. That is going to set some environment variables to um, change the gem file to gemfile.next instead of using the regular gem file. And you'll see here that it installed Rails 6.1 RC1 from GitHub. And we can run next Rails server to boot up our application. And if we refresh our page, we were on Rails 6.0. And if we refresh, we're now on Rails 6.1 RC1. And that is all there is to it. Now we can test our application by running Rails or next Rails test and all of our other commands, we just need to prefix with next so it uses the correct gem file. And that's it. So this is super duper easy for getting you up to speed on your application with the latest version of Rails. This is something I'm gonna do in basically every application from now on so that all of those are ready to go for the next version of Rails. Now this is great, but the question you're probably asking is what if we need to change our code inside our Rails app depending on the Rails version that we're running. So maybe we need a different config uh, in our application.rb file or something. We can check that by using the rails.gem version um, value. So this is going to give us a gem version object, which actually understands all of the .rc1 and things like that. So what's really cool about this is that you can say, is this version greater than gem version dot new 6.1.0? So in theory, what we want is this to say false because the RC1 is actually a pre-release of 6.1.0. So if we run this, we should see false. And if we say dot RC0, it should be true. And you know this applies to any versions that you can pass in here. So what's really nice about this is if you need to go and make any adjustments in your code, maybe something in your test, maybe you need a different config somewhere, you can use this to actually go 
and um, do the same application inside of your code base, just like you did with the next question mark method in your uh, gem file. So this is gonna be the tool that you will use to uh, branch your code depending on the Rails version if it's needed. You wanna try and avoid having to do this as much as possible, of course, but it is sometimes just required and necessary as uh, features change in Rails versions. And maybe you wanna add a new version or a new feature that's in Rails 6.1 that isn't in Rails 6.0 and you just have to use this. So that is all you need to do to dual boot your Rails application. And when a new version comes out, you can update the main version on your gem file. So we would just update this to 6.1.0 whenever that finally comes out. And we can leave the next version tracking Rails master which will begin work on Rails 6.2 and 7.0 and so on later on. So this is a really, really useful thing to just have in every application because you can be prepared way ahead of time for the next version of Rails.